Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Gaffin. I'm an adjunct professor of math at Tulsa Community College and Rogers State University in Oklahoma. I'd like to present to you the proper way to factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient greater than one. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube that you can choose, but this one will be the one that you'll want to use. Here we go. The trinomial ax squared plus or minus a bx plus or minus c, the main variable is the x. The a, the b, and the c will be numbers, but your a coefficient must be greater than 1. This always gives uh, students problems when it comes to factoring, because when the leading coefficient is a 1 and just starts off with x squared, this is usually pretty decent, because it just be the factors of the last coefficient or the last constant that add, add it to the middle. The factoring works out pretty well. But when this is not a 1, this is where the issues come into play. So there's a much better procedure out there that none of these other videos talk about, and let's see it in action. So, first off, make sure you look for greatest common factor. If it is there, you must divide that away, and then proceed with the rest of the trinomial that would be in the parentheses. We'll go with examples that don't have a GCF, but always check for that first. <coughs> Excuse me. First off, you multiply the A and the C numbers. Multiply first number and last number. You do not worry about your variable at this whole point until the very end. You multiply your a times your c, it will look like that. Find your factors of a times c that add to the middle coefficient of b. So again, take care of those. We'll see this in action with an example in a moment. Those will give you two factors. We'll say factor 1, factor 2. After that, you'll divide the factors as a fraction by the leading coefficient of a. So factor 1 over a, factor 2 over a. Do not actually divide, again, think fraction. Reduce your fractions if possible. Now, it's okay if, it, if it's improper. Don't worry about that. Do not go mix number on this. But do reduce the fractions if possible. Numerator 1 over denominator 1, numerator 2 over denominator 2. This is assuming that they do actually reduce. If there are any negatives, though, make sure you keep them on top. Again, if there are any negatives, please keep them on top. So. We have numerator 1 over denominator 1, numerator 2 over denominator 2. Once you have the reduced fractions, you are now able to make your parentheses sets for your factoring. You already know because of the x squared at the, at the start that you must have x's in the first spots. But here's where the coefficients have to go. There is no more guess and check or trial and error. There is no doing this by factor by grouping as some of the other videos show. This is the, where the payoff is. Denominator will always go in front of your variable. The numerator will always go after. Denominator in front, numerator after. And everything will fill in. All no worries, everything works out great. Just make sure if you do have a GCF from the start, that that goes in front of the first quantity and follows along. Other than that, works like a charm. If you cannot find any factors of your A times C that add to your middle, then you would say that the trinomial is prime and cannot be factored. No big deal, but that's all you have to work, watch out for. Again, no trial and error to realize, hey, nothing ever works, and then it's prime after you've done all this work. Uh-huh. You check this, you find your factors, it will work. You don't find any factors to add to the middle, it's prime, it will not work. Okay, here's our example. It's my usual one, 6x squared minus 5x minus 4. Following procedure, multiply your first and last numbers. That'd be a 6 and the negative 4. Yes, the signs do matter. That gives us a negative 24. Box that off. Now, go through your factor pairs of what multiplies to a negative 24. That'd be a 1 and a 24. 2 times 12. 3 times 8. 4 times 6. So again, you're thinking what's called factor pairing. Now, some of this you can do in your mind, but I need to show in terms of this process. Now, in this case, you know that they're multiplying to a negative 24, so one of these has to be negative. If this is negative, the larger of the two factor pairs, which will always be this column, if you follow it in this procedure in numerical order, that will get the first sign. If this is a positive, this product ends up being positive, whatever the first sign is, is the sign of all your factors. But if this is negative, the larger of the two, which is this column, always gets the first sign. So if this had been a plus, these would be positives. Since this is a negative, or a minus, these will be negatives. And then we just look and see which of these factor pairs adds up to a negative 5. It is right here, the 3 and the negative 8. I'll put those down. Okay. From there, 
we divide by the leading coefficient of 6. Not real division, just as a fraction. Okay, we reduce the fractions if we can. That'd be a 1 half here and negative 4 thirds here. Okay, from the reduced fractions, we are now ready to actually do our factoring. So each, each fraction gets its own parentheses set. We already knew there had to be x's in or near the first spots because of the 6x squared that is first. Denominators go in front, numerators after. Denominators in front, numerators after. Final answer, 2x plus 1 times quantity 3x minus 4. Nice, huh? Works like a charm. Now, I mentioned that there was payoff in this, but actually I didn't mention the real payoff. The real payoff of this process happens if you're trying to factor a trinomial equation. Here's the real aspect. Let's say that all this equals zero and you're trying to solve for x. Now, most of the time they would tell you in the algebra classes that you would factor this to solve when it's set equal to zero. Great. So, I'll make this equal to zero as well. Okay, fine. Now, we should be aware of what's called the zero factor property, which means once we've got factoring on one side and zero on the other side, then we just set each of our factors equal to zero, and we solve for our variable that way. Because after all, anything times zero has to give you zero. So that just basically means that either this whole thing is zero or this whole thing is zero. Well, we don't know, so we pretend both of them could be. All right, that's fine. So, bring these over to here. 2x plus 1, that means quantity equals 0. We just subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 2. So a negative 1 half. Okay. 3x plus 4, I'm sorry, minus 4, excuse me, equals 0. That's 3x equals 4. And divide by 3, x is 4 thirds. All right, so we have our two solutions for this trinomial equation. Okay, fine. Here is where the payoff really happens. Look at the two answers and compare them to your two reduced fractions from the factoring process. What you notice, I'll give you a moment. Yes, that's correct. They are opposites. Absolutely. And because they are opposites, guess what? If you have to quote-unquote factor to solve, you won't need to complete the factoring process. All you'll need to do is get to the reduced fractions, and then all you have to do is make them their opposites, and you are done. There's the beauty of the payoff. There's where the other methods leave you hanging. This is where it's at. Let's do one more example. Let's go ahead and change the order of those things. How about we do 4x squared, let's make it plus 5x minus 6. Let's do this. Now you think it's going to be related to that one over there, and you're right, it probably will be. But the main thing I want to choose about this is, is this going to be in those parentheses sets a 1 and a 4, a 4 and a 1, or a 2 and a 2? Well, again, this is where the trial and error crap you know, gets the better of you. So let's, again, let's go through this process correctly. Multiply the 4 and the negative 6, we get negative 24. Now, factors in negative 24, they add to a positive 5. Or related to that previous problem, that'd be a positive 8 and a negative 3 this time. Okay. We will divide each of those by that leading coefficient of 4. Reduce the fractions if we can. 2 over 1 and a negative 3 fourths, so they don't actually, well, this one reduces. But there you go. From there, we'll make our parentheses sets. We already know there has to be x's in the first spots. Again, denominator goes in front, numerator goes after, denominator in front, numerator after. There's your factoring. If you have to just simply factor. But again, let's just say that you have to solve for x. Let's say it was a trinomial equation. 
So you set equal to zero. Well, again, you don't need to finish off this factoring process. The fact that we have our reduced fractions right there is enough to take care of us. All we have to do is make them their opposites, and we're done. X equals a negative 2 and a positive 3 fourths. That's it. Those are the answers to this equation. We're done. I dare anyone, if you don't believe me, go ahead and finish this off and solve for x in each of these. I promise you you'll get a negative 2 and a positive 3 fourths. But you won't need to do that anymore, at least if you're solving an equation. I hope you enjoyed the process. Please leave comments or like. Find me on Facebook. All is good. I hope you have a great day and good luck in your math.